What is going on guys, Bisectatron here, bringing you today's video, and we are talking about my favorite attack strategy at Town Hall 13, because um, there's lots of different go-tos right now, but um, a lot of them have been running into some problems as base building has been improving, and I think there's one attack in particular that I've seen been working really well lately, especially as people are using the single Inferno Towers more to try to prevent queen charges, um, and other types of popular attacks, this one seems to work pretty well against those, and even against multi-infernos, and this is the uh, Pekka Bow Bat, or even the Yeti Bat attack. Basically, you're gonna smash the base as best you can um, with Pekka, Bowler, uh, Yetis, whatever combination fits the base best, and we'll talk about uh, what that might be for each specific base. And then uh, you're gonna do a Bat Wave on the back end, and this is where it helps to use those ice golems to tank wizard towers like that one up there if you can. Um, so this first attack was done by me uh, from our most recent war in One Hive Origins. Or not our most recent war, but uh, a war in One Hive Origins. And um, you always want to come town hall side, uh, use the warden's ability over the town hall. And um, in this case I elected to use P.E.K.K.A.s just because I was uh, doing a blimp and the Yetis can take a long time, so unless you're going to be, you know, dropping them right from the beginning, I like P.E.K.K.A.s a little better because they move a little quicker uh, for time's sake, if nothing else. Um, and in this case, I think it was the right choice. Now, like I said, we have an Ice Golem. Sorry to pause it. I know that annoys people sometimes. But an Ice Golem tanking the Wizard Tower there, um, that prevents the use of one, two free spells. Also, the champion is a great way to, instead of having to use freezes, because you're short on spells often, you typically need a jump spell, at least, um, possibly other uh, spells as well. Um, I had two rages in this case for my main push into the base, but you can use the champion to target a wizard tower, or even a scatter shot, a multi-inferno, anything on the back end that might be problematic, and you can see the champion's gonna tank the wizard tower, take it out, and also tank that scatter shot. Um, the scatter shots, you gotta be careful because they can switch targets quickly and you wanna make sure they're locked onto a P.E.K.K.A or your king or your queen or something. If they start looking like they're gonna target the bats, make sure you get the freeze down on them. One thing to keep in mind though, because they, um, if you ever tap on a scatter shot, the range does not include a couple tiles immediately surrounding it. They're like a mortar in that sense. They can't target something that's right next to them. So if your bats are right on top of the scatter shot, you don't need to freeze it. Um, it's only if they are somewhat close. Okay, so we will fast forward to the end of this attack here. One thing you notice as well is I used the Yeti Blimp to take out a single Inferno to make the entry easier. That's going to be very helpful and you'll see this in more attacks as well. Um, we're going to switch over here and take a look at one from the other side, uh, number 15 I believe it is. And um, you'll see once again using the, oh, actually did not use the Yeti, or maybe he did. I think he's going to switch to a blimp. I believe so. Uh, right now it's showing a siege barracks, but um, if I remember correctly, there was a, a Yeti blimp used to take out that single inferno. Um, but we shall see. Yeah, there it is. It switched. Um, and that's very helpful for entry, but it also can be used to target multi-infernos, target scatter shots, and to help eliminate the, the uh, damage that's most critical to your bats. Um, but in this case, similar to my attack, using it to help with the entry there. And the entry is obviously very important to get everything going in kind of a narrow funnel. King obviously being used on the other side, that's typically what you're going to use to, uh, to funnel that other side. Then you're going to do a queen walk or a warden walk, or in my case, just a few wizards to clear the, other, the initial side. Um, the Yeti blimp obviously helped with that in both attacks. Um, one quick note, guys, as we take a look at this attack here, um, the... Uh, Creator codes reset, so be sure to, uh, if you haven't done this recently, go into your settings, more settings, scroll all the way down to the bottom, just like it says on the right of the screen there, um, and enter my creator code, it's bisect, and it really helps me out, um, gives me some credit for Supercell, uh, if you enjoy my channel, if you watch it a lot, and if not, um, if you have another creator in mind, support them. Um, the key is that you're supporting someone, because otherwise, uh, it's kind of, you know, not getting, giving credit to any creator that you follow. So um, support someone uh, using the creator code because it does reset and a lot of people don't know that. Something they might change eventually, but for now, you kind of have to re-enter that code. So like I said, mine is bisect, as you can see on the right of the screen there. 
But anyway, uh, once again, Ice Golems to tank some of these back end wizard towers. The Eagle was pretty far away, but not a big deal. Um, it's really about can you get those bats to move through the base and not have too much uh, to stop them? Because typically, uh, with healers on either your Pekkas or your Yetis, you're going to be okay. Um, they're not going to get destroyed, even if the Eagle's still up, even if there's a bunch of scatter shots. The main thing is making sure that they're going to tank and that the bats can do their job uh, on the back end. Now, one thing for base builders that you're, you're going to be seeing time and time again as we look at these attacks is that you cannot allow those ice golems to tank your back end wizard towers. So especially opposite the town hall, especially if you have single infernos and there's not a lot of you know scatter shots in the area, make sure those wizard towers can't be tanked by ice golems. Very important. If they're going to use the royal champion, there's not much you can do about that, but you can at least prevent the attacker from being able to use some ice golems to tank your wizard towers on the back end. So put some mortars out there, put them a little deeper in your base, uh, whatever you have to do uh, to make it so someone can't just use that uh, easy drop ice golem. Okay, one bonus attack. That's all we have for this specific attack strategy, but um, I wanted to throw in a bonus to uh, show another attack that I've been liking, and this is going back another war. Um, let's see. It is number seven. That doesn't make any sense. It's our number seven, okay. Or our attacking, their number seven. Anyway, um, it is a drag bat attack, and both these attacks using the bat spell, which I'm really liking at Town Hall 13 right now with these single infernos. And um, I, I like the other a little better because dragons, there's more specific things you need to see in order to be able to use drag bat, whereas the other one's a little more versatile. Um, mainly, you got to be able to make a good funnel for the dragons. If it's too wide, they're not going to get deep enough into the base. And also, you don't want to lure out like a Lava Hound if it's in the CC. And you can see the CC is not quite able to reach those heroes, which is actually very helpful. Because um, you don't want to lure out Ice Golems, Lava Hounds, Valkyries. Um, it's just more trouble for your, for your troops. So anyway, uh, or actually maybe it does lure. It's hard to tell. I think just an Archer came out. Um, so that's good. Good funnel as well, use the Royal Champion, which is a great way to create kind of a cheap funnel um, because oftentimes the Royal Champion uh, you know, doesn't have a lot of other value otherwise in these dragon attacks. And by the way, it was a dragon in the CC, so it doesn't matter really, but if it is a Lava Hound CC, you wanna make sure not to lure it uh, with your heroes. So anyway, uh, Good Warden's ability didn't cover the Town Hall, but it doesn't need to for dragons necessarily. It depends on, on the attack. And then here come the bats. Uh, looks like that Wizard Tower locked on instead to the Ice Golem just because the bats were a little bit early, so you know, keep that in mind, but nice adjustment with the freeze there. And I like the freeze on the scatter shot, just to be safe. Um, it wasn't sure, it wasn't clear what the scatter shot was gonna target. So don't take any risks, especially when you have three freezes, uh, as the attacker does in this case. Um, so, you know, don't get too greedy. If, you, if it was like a back end wizard tower and you gotta save the freeze for it, that makes a little more sense than you can take the risk. But in this case, we're already swagging a freeze anyway. Um, so don't get too greedy with your freezes. Better safe than sorry with that. Anyway, um, the bats clean up the base. I'd say bring a few minions. I always do that on my attacks just because the cleanup takes forever with these drag bat attacks. So have some minions down. That'll take out like this area much quicker um, so you don't run out of time. Just a little pro tip there. Um, but anyway, that'll do it guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like I said, um, drag bat, but even more so the first two attacks we looked at Pekka uh, Bow Bat, as well as the Yeti Bat, um, and you can use bowlers with the Yetis as well. Some combination of that uh, is very powerful at Town Hall 13. Like I said, if you're doing kind of more of a longer entry with the Warden, I'd recommend uh, that you uh, use the Pekkas because they move a little quicker. The Yetis are a little tankier, they'll survive a little better uh, than the Pekkas typically because they're not going to run out in front and get killed. Um, and they, they spawn the, uh, the Yeti Mites, which can do some damage. So see what works better for you, but I'd say it uh, depends on the base, the damage, and um, what you're trying to achieve with that push through the base. So that'll do it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. Once again, be sure to use my creator code BISECT. Give me some love uh, in-game in the settings there, and I will see you guys next time. Bisectatron out.